Hello everyone, welcome to yet another lecture series on basics of electrical engineering. In this video, we're going to see various worked examples on series RL circuit. So let's get started. So before that, uh, one of the most important things is that if you're not watching the theory related to series RL circuit, please do watch it. There's a video on it. The link will be provided in the description. And once you watch that, you will be able to uh, draw these important conclusions. I'm just narrating these important conclusions because it will help you out in, so in order to solve the problems with respect to it. Trust me, there are eight problems solved in this particular uh, series of lectures and all eight problems would be somewhat different and you would be able to gain a lot of confidence with respect to problems on series RL circuit. Um, you can take it from me that 90% of the problems related to series RL circuit you will be sol able to solve on your own after solving these problems. So let's get started. Uh, the voltage uh, and current relationship in series RL circuit is that current lags behind voltage by an angle equal to phi. That's the reason it is given as IM sine of omega t minus phi. Since I lags behind V, it is slightly uh, after some angle say equal to phi. This is the phasor diagram. That is uh, the supply voltage V leads by I by an angle equal to phi. It is clearly indicated over here. The impedance associated with a series RL circuit is R plus J into XL. The reason why it is plus J and not minus J in case of series RC circuit is simple because the voltage leads current. The relationship with respect to voltage is defined in terms of positive and negative values with respect to J. The phase difference is uh, between 0 to 90 degree and it is called as lagging with respect to series RL circuit and it is called as leading with respect to series RC circuit. One of the major differences because in problems they may give you a lagging power factor and you have to understand that it is with respect to series RL circuit. Once that is done, power factor, three definitions with respect to power factor. That is, power factor is generally cos phi. So based on that, it, we can say cos phi is equal to Vr by V or R by Z or P by S. Based on voltage triangle, impedance triangle and power triangle, we can derive these equations. So any three uh, equations can be used. In case they give you R and Z, you can use this formula. In case they give you Vr and V and ask you to find the power factor, you can use this formula. So depending upon the context of the problem, we have to apply them. So the power is, uh, there are three definitions uh, with respect to power so active power reactive power and apparent power active power is vi cos phi this is the actual power or the power consumed by the circuit uh, that is with respect to the resistive element that is associated in the circuit and uh, q is the reactive power that is uh, you usually uh, also called as circulating power it is because of the inductance or the capacitance that is used in the circuit so reactive power is always referred to with respect to the inductance that is there in the circuit and in, hence if you see you have i square xl so that means xl is associated with inductance and it is indirectly saying that reactive power is associated with uh, an inductor and uh, the apparent power is, is the product of V into I so we'll be requiring these three equations in order to solve any type any type of problems with respect to uh, the active reactive and apparent power respectively so very important conclusions keep them handy and make a note of them in a separate place so once you have them you will be able to uh, refer to these uh, when you have uh, to solve few problems related to it so let's get started off with the problems so our first example for today is an alternating voltage of 80 plus J60 volt is applied to a circuit and the current flowing is 4 minus J2 amps. Find the impedance, the phase angle, the power factor and power consumed. So very important observation to be made looking at this problem. So they've not given you an indication of it is a series RL or series RC. So it might be anything. But since we are solving series RL, you'll be able to identify, okay, this is a series RL circuit. But it is not the case. Be very careful. See the voltage is given as 80 plus J60 and the current is given as 4 minus J2. That means my, it is associated with minus J. If you convert this into polar form, this is in rectangular form using calculator and find the magnitude and angle, you will be uh, understanding that I is lagging behind V. That's the reason it is called a series RL circuit for this particular case of the problem. So we'll be solving each of them since it is series RL circuit. So we'll be writing the given data at the first place. Very important observation because once we write what is given, we will be able to further simplify and solve the problem. Our first step is to determine the inductive in the impedance. That is what is asked over here. So how do we do it? Z bar is equal to V bar by I bar. Very important observation is that it is always indicated by bar because it is the polar. Uh, it is in phasor uh, representation it is not in if it is only z then it is in uh, with respect to magnitude but uh, they've given you z bar uh, that clearly indicates it is with respect to phasor form so any problem with respect to ac should be represented in terms of phasor so uh, what does phasor is uh, associated
associated with it associates with a magnitude and a phase angle so you have to write both whenever they ask you a question related to it so 80 plus j into 60 uh, that is the voltage divided by 4 minus j2 so convert this into polar form as i told you earlier if you clearly observe the current is negative with respect to angle that means volt i is lagging behind v here itself you can identify that it is a series rl circuit so solving this further you will be getting 22.37 at an angle 63.43 degrees uh, that is phasor uh, this and the effective uh, unit for uh, impedance is ohms so if you want to find only the magnitude of it it is 22.37 so this is taken separately and it is written in this particular fashion so all right so we have found the impedance next step is to find the phase angle how do we find the phase angle if you carefully observe uh, the impedance that we have obtained it is associated with v and i or what we what we can do is the difference between the angles that is with respect to v and i if you carefully see if you take i in the numerator you will be getting 63.43 isn't it so magnitude and phase angle is there so whatever phase angle is with respect to impedance that clearly means that is a phase angle of the circuit so phi is 63.43 degrees so once this is done our next step is to find power factor from the definition of power factor it is uh, power factor is given by the cosine of the phase angle so power factor is equal to cos phi that is cos 63.43 that is equal to 0.447 one of the most important conclusions from this i already mentioned with respect to rl circuit it is always lagging power factor so you have to mention it as lagging because it is associated with uh, respect to i so since i is lagging behind v we will be writing it as lagging power factor next step is to determine the power consumed so how do we find it so one important point with respect to power consumed so if they say power is being consumed in a circuit it is only active power be very uh, careful it is the active power that is used in a uh, particular circuit that is the consumption of power with respect to any circuit is due to the resistive elements that are there so that is the active power so if they ask you to find the power consumed that it, then it should be active power so the formula for active power is vi cos phi that is 100 into 4.47 will be finding them in polar forms and the magnitudes is multiplied over here we don't want to uh, determine the phase angle in case you want to determine the angle you can uh, represent it as well so uh, you will be getting 199.81 watt so this clearly summarizes our uh, previous problem so in case you have any uh, questions related to this feel free to reach out so once this is done our second problem is quite similar to the first one so i uh, you can pause this video at this point and try this problem on your own it will definitely give you a lot of confidence so uh, let us look at this problem the voltage and current in a circuit are given by the magnitude of v is given in polar form and the current is also given in polar form if the circuit works on a 50 hertz supply determine impedance resistance reactance power factor and power loss considering the circuit as a simple series circuit so they said it is a simple series circuit but they have not mentioned whether it is a series rl circuit or whether it is a series rc circuit or uh, any other circuit for that matter so how do we assume is it a series rl or series rc very simple as i mentioned in our previous uh, problem as well so voltage associated phase angle with respect to v is plus 30 degree and with respect to i is minus 15 degree that means i is clearly lagging with respect to v whenever current is lagging behind voltage it should be a series rl circuit Circuit, isn't it so from here we will be getting a clear identification that it should be a series rl circuit so let's start up with the solution for this particular problem so we'll be writing the given data they've given us the value magnet phasor value of v and i and uh, consequently the supply to the signal uh, for this particular problem is 50 hertz all of this is written in a particular place once this is done our first step is to determine the impedance how do we find the value of impedance that is z bar is equal to v bar by i bar they have given directly in polar form substitute and find the answer you will be getting 75 at an angle 45 degrees second step is to find the resistance and the, uh, the third step is to find the reactance so what we will be doing is whatever is represented in polar form convert them into rectangle form so in any problem for that matter it is always good practice if you have them represented in both polar form and rectangular form so always make an habit of writing both polar form and rectangular form f for a particular uh, question so uh, how how is that helpful in this case uh, we will be writing the value of z once z is found out we, in order to find resistance and reactance it is very simple this is the resistance uh, part because r plus jxl is the impedance offered with respect to a series rl circuit this is the reactance so if you represent them in polar form automatically you know the resistance over here you know the reactance over here so write the value of resistor that is to be 53.03 ohms and the reactance to be equal to 53 
and the reactance to be equal to 53.03 ohms so both are same in this case step 3 is to determine the power factor as i already mentioned you uh, the power factor is defined as cos of uh, the phi value but phi phi is given as 45 degree so uh, since they have asked us to find the power factor you will have to uh, obtain the cos of this value it's not uh, written but cos 45 is 1 by root 2 so 1 by root 2 is the power factor for uh, this particular problem so 1 by root 2 is nothing but uh, 0 0.707 uh, so this is the power factor with respect to this circuit and it should be mentioned as lagging i have not uh, included that please do make a note of it so to determine the power loss the power loss or the power consumed both are the same uh, so power loss in the sense that is the power consumed in the circuit so as i mentioned in our previous problem power loss is nothing but the actual power consumed in the circuit so p is equal to vi cos phi substitute the value of v that we know and value of i only with respect to magnitude and the value of cos phi so that is 0 0.707 you'll be getting 212.1 watt this is the this gives you a clear picture of how to solve uh, this type of uh, problem uh, however there are various other types as well so let's go one by one so let's get into our next example that is example three so in this case they have given us a voltage v of t uh, in a particular form uh, that is 177 sine of uh, the value with respect to the frequency and the phase angle and it is applied to a circuit it causes a steady state current to flow which is described by a current equation is given and uh, determine the power factor and average power delivered to the circuit so they have only asked us two things in this case they've asked us to find the power factor they've asked us to find the average power delivered to the circuit so again looking at the voltage equation current equation i is uh, the the angle associated with respect to i is negative here and it is positive here that means v is leading with respect to i when i is lagging with respect to v then it means it is series rl circuit so this gives us a clear identification that this problem is associated with series rl circuit so next step what can be done so we will be uh, writing the given data at the first place and in order to determine the power factor you can um, uh, first uh, write the step called current i lags behind voltage v of t by 30 degree this is very simple if uh, i of t is associated with minus 20 degree and you have to come to 10 degree that is with respect to v of t means you have 30 degree phase difference between each other so that's the reason why it is 30 degree so uh, phi is nothing but 30 degree or in other words you can write it the phase angle can be found in this particular way as well 10 minus of minus 20 you'll be getting 30 degree so phi is equal to 30 degree in this case so once you find the value of phi the power factor is very simple that is cos phi that is 0.866 since it is a series rl circuit we'll have to mention lagging always so once this is done our next step is to find the average power so the average power is nothing but the power consumed in the circuit that is p is equal to vi cos phi so v v i cos phi very very important steps at this particular point is that 177 by root 2 so the value of v is nothing but v rms they've given you an equation and that doesn't mean 177 is the magnitude all of a sudden it is vm so vm is nothing but so v is nothing but vm by root 2 and i is nothing but im by root 2 so 14.14 divided by root 2 is to be done 177 divided by root 2 is to be done into 0.866 that is the uh, power factor obtained in this case you will be getting the average power consumed so one of the commonly made mistakes with respect to students is that they will directly substitute the value of v and i over here very very wrong so be very careful with this particular step uh, so this is how we will be solving this problem i hope uh, uh, you would be uh, able to solve these type of problems on your own so our next example for that matter is uh, whenever a sinusoidal voltage of 120 volt uh, rms voltage that specified is applied to a series rl circuit it is found that there is there occurs a power dissipation of 1200 watt and a current flow given by i of t is equal to 28.3 sin of 314 t minus phi find the circuit resistance and inductance so indirect uh, indirectly they have said that we have to find the resistance and inductance although they have not given uh, okay they have given the series rl circuit as well so our uh, step is to find the circuit resistance and inductance directly so first uh, write down the given data that is v is equal to 120 volt and p is equal to 1200 watt so i of t equation is written over here so once uh, this is done we will be starting off in order to find the resistance value so we know uh, the value of i is given in terms of equations so we have to 
find the RMS value of it that is 28.3 divided by root 2 as in the previous case so you'll be getting 20.01 this is the actual RMS value of current in this case so we know the value of uh, V we know the value of I so we know the value of uh, power given as well so if we substitute in this equation we can find the value of cos phi so why are we finding the value of cos phi we'll be able to find the value of phi from phi how is it how is the value of phi helpful in this case so z is equal to v by i isn't it so 120 divided by 20.01 you will be getting equal to approximately equal to 6 ohms so from this uh, magnitude of z uh, the phasor value of z is equal to z at an angle phi so correspondingly 6 at an angle of 60.02 that is the phase angle phi so if you convert this polar form into rectangular form you will be arriving at 3 plus j 5.2 that means this is the reactance part and this is the induct re resistance part and this is the reactance part that means if they ask what is the resistance with respect to this it is 3 ohms and what what is the reactance it is 5.2 ohms so how do we determine the inductance value so the value of inductance can be deter determined by the formula xl is equal to omega l so when we are arriving at this particular rectangular form the resistance is given as 3 ohms and in the reactance is given as 5.2 ohms that is the reason why we are following this procedure we we can directly find the value of z is equal to v by i but we want the phase angle associated with it as well so that we can convert it into rectangular form and find the value of resistance and inductance that's the reason why we followed these sequence of steps so once that is done xl is equal to omega l omega is nothing but equal to 2 pi f so substitute it so 2 pi f 50 hertz is the supply frequency so substituting you will be getting it uh, with respect to 340 but in this case they have not given us the frequency to be 50 hertz in general it is 50 hertz but since they have not given the frequency the over here they have given in terms of the equation that is uh, sine of omega t minus 5 so omega here is to 314 substituting the value you will be able to find the value of l which is 0 0.0165 henry so they have asked us to find the value of resistance that is 3 ohms they have asked us to find the value of inductance that is 0 0.0165 henry so i hope uh, this problem uh, is understood in case you have any questions, feel free to reach. So uh, our next problem uh, is uh, with respect to this. When an inductive coil is connected to a DC supply at 240 volt, the current is at 16 amps. When the same coil is connected to an AC supply uh, of a 240 volt, comma 50 hertz, the current is 20.27 amps. Calculate resistance, impedance, reactance, and inductance of the coil. This problem sounds interesting, isn't it? It's a different type of a problem. So please make a note of this type of problems as well. So our first step is to write the given data, whatever is given for DC the what is the supply voltage what is the current flowing for AC what is the supply voltage and what is the current flowing according to the given data once that is done our first step is to determine the resistance so uh, when an inductor coil is connected to a DC supply that is our first uh, 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 case when uh, as per the given data so whenever they are connected to a DC supply the frequency is equal to zero isn't it so when the frequency is equal to zero XL is equal to 2 pi FL so since F is equal to zero XL is also equal to zero since uh, XL is equal to zero the coil behaves like a pure resistor because uh, if you have a network like R and J into XL connected in series and the value of XL is equal to zero that means what is left out you will be having only resistor isn't it so that's the reason why uh, the coil behaves like a pure resistor so r is equal to v by i straight away we can substitute the value of this 240 and divided by 16 that is equal to 15 ohms or in other words if they tell you uh, uh, if uh, an inductance coil is connected to a dc supply that is clearly understood that inductance acts as a short circuit with respect to dc supply and directly you can find the value of r that is equal to v by i very simple analysis uh, don't scratch your heads for this particular um, um, case study so next step is to determine the impedance value so how do we find the value of impedance so when the coil is connected to an ac supply what happens for z so z is equal to v by i so that is 240 volt uh, with respect to ac supply divided by the current with respect to ac supply that is 12.27 you'll be getting 19.56 so we have found out the impedance we have found out the resistance so once this is done our next step is to find the reactance and the inductance of the coil so step three is to determine the reactance at the first place xl is equal to square root of z square minus r square or in other words we had that formula z is equal to square root of r square plus 
chained excel square excel square so that can be substituted in this particular fashion and written in this particular way and once that is done substituting these two values you will be getting 12.55 ohms so be very careful with respect to substitution part so don't go wrong at this place so step four is to determine the inductance value so how do we find the value of inductance we already have the value of excel so it's very simple excel is equal to 2 pi fl so uh, substituting the value of uh, the given uh, data they have given us the frequency as 50 as well so we'll be substituting that so l will be finding it out and it is equal to 0.04 henry so we have found out the resistance we have found out the impedance we have found out the reactance and we have found out the inductance as well so i hope uh, uh, the approach for these type of problems is understood so all right let's move on so let's go into our next problem whenever a coil is connected across a 250 volt 50 hertz supply uh, it takes a current of 10 amps at 0.8 lagging power factor. What will be the power taken by a choke coil when connected across a 200 volt 25 hertz supply? Also calculate the resistance and inductance of the coil. So they have asked us two sub questions here. Uh, at the first place, any observation that is need to be made is that they have given us as lagging power factor. So uh, lagging power factor clearly indicates that this type of problem is associated with series RL. So that is our first observation for any problem. And once that is done, we will be writing the given data. That is, they have given V1 250 volt and uh, F1 to be equal to 50 hertz and I1 that is current flowing is equal to 10 amps. So what will be the power taken when the when the choke is co choke coil is connected across two 200 volt and 25 hertz this is taken as v2 this is taken as f2 they have given the value of power factor so two internal cases when the coil is connected with respect to this supply and when the coil is connected to this supply so what will be the power taken with respect to the second case so that is what is asked at the first place we'll be finding the uh, resistance and inductance of the coil so it's very simple uh, z1 is equal to v1 by i1 based on ohm's law you'll be getting the value of uh, z1 to be equal to 25 ohms so phi 1 is equal to cos inverse of so we know that cos phi is equal to 0.8 that is power factor they have given so phi can be found out by inversing the cos value bringing it to the RHS that is cos, cos inverse of 0.8 you will be getting 36.86 degree so magnitude of if you are representing z1 in phasor that is z1 bar is equal to z1 at an angle phi 1 z1 over here is 25 at an angle of 36.87 so representing them in rectangular form you will be arriving at this so once you are arriving at this point it is very clear resistance is equal to 20 ohm and in in reactance is equal to 15 ohms that is the imaginary part so that is what is our first step so we have found out that so next question is uh, what will be the power taken by the choke oil when connected across this supply so for that we need to carry out few analysis so xl1 is equal to 2 pi f1 into l so we'll be finding the inductance value that is equal to 0 0.0477 henry in this case and in order to determine the power taken when connected across a 200 volt 50 hertz supply, we have to uh, find out the values of XL2. So how do we find out XL2? XL2 is given as equal to 2 pi F2 into L. So we'll be substituting the value of 2 pi and F2 is given as 25 hertz and L value we know. So that's the reason why we split this and we found out the value of L. We'll be substituting it over here and find the value of XL2. So once the value of XL2 is determined, uh, how do we find the value of Z2? How is it associated? So we know the resistance that is equal to 20 ohms and uh, the imaginary part of the reactance that is 7.49 ohms. So um, with respect to this, when we are representing them in rectangular polar from rectangular to polar form you will be getting 21.36 at an angle 20.53 degrees so once we know the the impedance z2 we will be able to find out uh, the value of current i2 that is given by v2 by z2 so that is 200 divided by 21.36 that is 9.36 9 amps so once we know i2 once we know phi2 that's the reason why we found out z2 bar so once we know i2 once we know phi2 we will be able Able to substitute them that is 200 into 9.36 into cos of 20.53 the vast is the power when it, the choke coil is connected to this particular supply that's the reason why we are finding phi 2 with respect to this all the power factor with respect to the initial one is given so that's our steps so first step is to determine the resist resistance and inductance uh, by substituting z1 in polar form phasor form if you represent you will be getting r, r and xl once you find the value of r and xl find the value of inductance and substitute them with respect to xl2 and find the value of xl2 and substitute them in with respect to z2 bar and find the value of z2 bar 
are the phase angle and the magnitude associated with it find the current flowing through the circuit when they are connected to 200 volt 25 hertz supply and then find the power that is p is equal to v2 i2 cos phi 2 this is how we have to solve these type of problems once uh, this problem is clear in case you have any questions feel free to reach out uh, to me so once this problem is clear uh, you will be getting 1.753 kilowatt uh, that is the actual power consumed in this particular circuit when they are connected to 200 volt 25 hertz so once uh, you have a clear understanding of this problem we'll go into our next problem that is example 7 so uh, a load of 22 kilowatt operates at 0.8 power lagging power factor when connected to a 420 volt single phase 50 hertz source find current in the load power factor angle impedance resistance of the load reactance of the load voltage and current equations so they have given the power uh, with respect to the uh, the load of 22 kilowatt that means with respect to load they have given the power and they are giving giving us a uh, 0.8 lagging power factor so point it lagging lagging gives you an indication that it is a problem related to series rl circuit so they are connected to a supply of 420 volt 50 hertz so first let us write down the data that we have 22 kilowatt p is given power factor is given v is given f is given so they have asked us to find the value of current i it is very simple p is equal to vi cos phi so substitute the value of p substitute the value of v substitute the value of power factor you will be getting the value of i that is 65.48 so first step with respect to our problem is done so they have asked us to find the power factor angle so we know that power factor is given that is cos phi is equal to 0.8 power factor angle is nothing but phi is equal to cos inverse of 0.8 so you will be getting the value of phi so uh, st next step is to calculate the impedance value so z is equal to v by i that is equal to 420 divided by 65.48 6.41 so this is also very straightforward so our next step is to determine the resistance re and reactance of the load so how do we do that from impedance triangle so uh, we are considering impedance triangle this is explained clearly with respect to theory so uh, please to watch that video that will give you a clear understanding so how do we find the value of resistance and reactance from impedance triangle very simple r can be written as z cos phi or in other words cos phi is equal to r by z if you are finding cos phi cos phi for this particular adjacent by hypotenuse cos phi is equal to r by z that means r is equal to z into cos phi substituting you will be getting 5.13 ohms similarly xl is equal to z sin phi so if you are um, uh, finding sin phi for this particular triangle that is opposite by hypotenuse you will be getting um, uh, xl by z is equal to sin phi so xl is equal to z into sin phi so substituting you will be getting 3.85 ohms this is the way in which resistance and reactance can be found out or in other uh, way if you want to do our conventional method we know the power factor phase angle so find the z in terms of uh, 6.41 at an angle and convert them into uh, rectangular form you will directly get the value of r and xl in case you don't want to do it in this particular method in order to uh, give you an overview of how it can be solved in another method i have just indicated this so once this is done uh, our next step is to determine the voltage and current equation so how do we do it so in general v is equal to vm sin of uh, 2 pi f into t that is 2 pi uh, that is vm sin omega t that is what is supposed to be written so 420 into root 2 that is according to our uh, data the vastest to find so in case uh, we want to compare it with respect to previous slide so 420 volt is given with respect to our given data so the voltage equation when we are writing it is 420 into root 2 because it is the rms value vm is not supposed to be written taken directly so you have to multiply it with respect to root 2 so sine of 2 pi into frequency 50 hertz t is kept, kept as it is so that is 593.97 sin of 100 pi t one of the commonly made mistakes is students directly take the value of vm to be equal to 420 and they do not multiply it with respect to root 2 so this is one of the most commonly made mistakes so be very careful with respect to writing the voltage and current equation so as uh, we have found out the phase angle phi uh, in the previous case so current lags behind the voltage by 36.87 degrees so that since it's uh, how can we say it, it is lagging because they have given it is a lagging power factor that means series rl circuit so the phase angle is 30 6.87 degree so i is equal to i m sine of 2 pi f or t minus phi why is it written minus phi because it is lagging that's the reason why it's written in that particular fashion we know the value of phi that is 65.48 into root 2 that is the rms value as i already mentioned with respect to voltage substitute the value and the phase angle is 36.87 since it's lagging with respect to the phase angle 
uh, with respect to the voltage you will be representing it this particular fashion so these are the voltage and current equations so we have found out all the uh, requirements with respect to this particular problem any questions feel free to reach out with respect to that problem so uh, we are in with our last problem uh, for today's uh, video so this is slightly different uh, compared to all the other problems so pause this video and try this problem on your own in case you are successful in doing this trust me you will be able to do any problem with respect to series rl circuit in case you're not uh, able to do it don't worry watch this video try to analyze how it is done and uh, Although uh, it will, it will definitely give you a confidence of solving any number of problems with respect to series RL circuit. Trust me. So uh, first step is uh, for this particular problem, they've given a choke coil is connected in series with a fixed resistance. Uh, a 240 volt 50 supply is connected uh, with respect to the circuit. This is the supply. If the voltage drop across coil and fixed resistor, this is the coil, this is the fixed resistor, is 140 volt and 160 volt respectively. Calculate the value of fixed resistance, the vast is the value of R, the vast is the value of R small r, the vast is the value of XL, and the vast is the power drawn by the coil. They have not given us the circuit diagram. This should be drawn on our own. This will give us a great vision as how this problem can be solved. So this can be solved by a series of steps. So first we'll write the given data, what is given to us according to our data. We'll start off with finding the value of fixed resistance this is very straightforward that is v is equal to r is equal to v by i by ohms law you can find the value the r value is given to be equal to 64 ohms so second step is to determine the resistance and inductance of the coil so fixed resistance is found out resistance and inductance will be our next step and once that is done we'll find the power drawn by the coil so how do we find this this is followed by a series of steps first z coil with respect to coil impedance of the coil is given by v coil that is uh, with respect to 140 volt uh, and divided by 2.5 that is uh, current flowing through the CD circuit so that is equal to 56 ohms so z coil is equal to square root of r square plus xl square that is the impedance formula that is z is equal to square root of r square plus xl square that is equal to 56 now what we'll be doing is we'll be uh, squaring on both the sides Squ roots cancel in this particular place square of 56 is 3136 label this as equation 1 now we'll find the overall impedance z that is equal to v by i 240 divided by 2.5 so overall impedance uh, as in it is the overall impedance of the entire circuit so be very careful with that step so so Z is equal to V by I 240 divided by 2.5 that is equal to 96 ohms. So phasor diagram phasor of Z is equal to uh, R plus small r plus J into XL that is the overall impedance since they are connected in series we are simply adding them. So now Z is equal to square root of R plus R whole square plus XL square that is this is the resistive part this is the uh, reactance part. So uh, it is given by we know that Z is equal to square root of R square plus XL square but R here is nothing but R plus R so you are representing in this particular fashion and now we know the value of z that is 96 ohms here so we know the value of fixed resistance are substitute for 64 and now we will be simplifying this e equation and you will be arriving at this particular equation write this as equation 2 now what we'll be doing is we'll subtract 2 from equation 1 so you'll be arriving at this particular point that is nothing but uh, we will be subtracting uh, 1 uh, with respect to 2 so 1 minus 2 is what we are doing so we'll be getting this particular equation. So further solving this equation, uh, R square, R square gets cancelled out. You'll be left out only with the value of R. You'll be getting 15.5 ohms. So we have found out the value of capital R. We have found out the value of small r. So only thing is to find the value of XL. So substitute back in equation 1, the value of R. You'll be getting the value of XL square. So take the square root of it. You'll be getting the value of XL. So uh, pretty much a lot of steps in this, but uh, it's a very simple problem. So once you find the value of XL, you can find the value of uh, inductance as well that is xl is equal to 2 pi fl substitute the value of it and uh, you can find the value of inductance so the vast is the value of r capital r that is fixed resistance the re reactance the inductance as well so we have found out all of them so next step is to determine the power drawn by the coil so the power drawn by the coil is nothing but i square into r small r because it is uh, whenever uh, they are asking anything with respect to the power drawn uh, or uh, the power consumed or the actual power 
uh, uh, used in the circuit uh, in that case you have to use these particular formula that is p coil is equal to i square into r small r in this case so we will be writing 2.5 square into 15.5 that is equal to 96.875 watt so we are not using the formula of uh, vi cos phi and all because we uh, do not know the exact uh, uh, angle we can find it in that particular method as well if we know all the values uh, exactly so in this case uh, we will be using this particular formula just to give you an overview of how it can be solved in a different method as well i hope uh, uh, eight problems are solved in this particular video and uh, this gives you a clear understanding as how to approach problems related to series rl circuit and how to uh, confidently solve them using the formulas that are required with respect to them um, so i hope uh, this video gives you a clear understanding uh, and builds a confidence in order to solve these types of problem in case you like this video please do like it share it and subscribe to our channel for regular updates uh, please do uh, keep supporting thank you